How's it going all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today I'm going to do an overview of the Lone Sloan Library Editions box set from Titan Comics. So join me. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to the folks at Titan Comics for sending us a copy of this box set. So what we're looking at here, spinning around this, what do y'all call this? I call it a spinner. My wife calls it a Lazy Susan. I also did not grow up in Kentucky, so I don't know if that's a Kentucky thing or if that's a American thing. Just thought it was like a, a spinner. But anyway, um, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the box. I figured we'd take a closer look at it this way by it spinning around instead of having my hands in the shot. But I do have to get my hands in the shot because I know people want to know the exact dimensions of this book. So that's what we're going to be doing first is comparing the three books collected in here to let's start with an omnibus. Now keep in mind these are inside of the box set. So the box set is just a little bit taller. But I wanted to give you a quick size comparison here. Let's do this so you can see the actual books in there and then next to the omnibus. Now, compare it to the size of an absolute. Again, both, well, actually both of them are in slip cases, so the books aren't quite that tall, but you can tell that the box set is just a little bit taller than your absolute editions. And of course, last but not least, comparing it to the size of a trade paperback, which are the trim size of a single issue a floppy call them what you will so you can tell that this is a big book or there are three big books in there rather so let's just take a closer look at the design of the box set up at the top you have a little more of those planets and at the bottom you have the full drillet artwork so this is the drillet library lone sloan talking about that character and it's just going to be a hard video to do uh, because anytime i talk about the stories of lone sloan I focus on the artwork, and rightly so. I think that's what most people focus on. Uh, the retail price of these three books inside of this box set is $74.99. So this is available here in America. And they do have the Static Express logo up here and the Titan logo down there. And then the three books. So you have Gale, Delirious, and then the Six Voyages of Lone Sloan. Now keep in mind the way that these box sets come from Titan Comics is the first book is always here on the right hand side. So I guess think of it like um, if you're reading it like this, uh, I don't know why I just did that hand gesture, Like, uh, but if you're reading it like this, it goes one, two, three. So I'll fix it because I'm just used to the way that we have it here in America. Uh, but here are the credits, Loeb and Droulet, or Delirious. Now one thing important to note is that these books have been released previously before in a just standard format, so without the box set. However, they did change the design of Delirious to match the design of the box set. And I thought that was a nice touch. It doesn't have the static press. I mean, this might be the latest printing. This might be an older printing too. So let me know which printing you have. But the three books inside of the slipcase look like they match perfectly. So yes, these have been previously released before. I believe these are $29.00. And 99 cents they were 24.99 when i first started getting them and that's how i first read this stuff so to answer the other question there are a lot more Droulet stories featuring lone sloan hopefully we will get another box set but this is the first one that <laughs> image right there just covering the booty shot because as some of you all know january is the worst month for youtube revenue so I don't want to get any kind of demonetization on this channel, at least not this month. Uh, but yes, there are several other stories and more box sets to come. Hopefully this will sell well enough. Let's take a closer look inside of the slipcase. Let's get these out of the slipcase. And much like the, uh, what is it, the uh, Elric box set that came out that I did an overview of, they come with six art cards you can use them as postcards you can put them in frames doesn't matter but they're the images of the covers there's gail right there and the books all the same dimension 
all hard covers, no art on the board. And I'll be taking a closer look at each one here and talking a little bit about the story because this is more of a journey and experience than it is a story to explain, I promise you. And anybody that has read it will probably tell you the same thing. Um, but I think that's all I wanted to do. Yeah, let's take a closer look at each of these books and we'll talk about the build and then the paper stock that they use for these printings. Now, before I go and open up this book, I do want to say that the stories in here do have mature content and were originally published in Europe. So Philippe Droulet was, I believe he was born in France and then moved to Spain and then moved back to France after the loss of his father. I did some research years ago when I just got huge into his Elric art. And I was like, who is this guy? And obviously he has a European flair to his artwork. And then I found the world of Lone Sloan. And the people that I've talked to about these stories, you know, we all agree that you come here for the art. You come here for the experience. If you want a resolution or a thought-provoking story, you're not really going to find that here. So be forewarned before you purchase this and you fall in love with the artwork that, to me at least, this isn't about the story, but it's about the journey, metaphysical aspects of things. Yes, it's getting really crazy. It's Grant Morrison... Level. It's like if Grant Morrison did some kind of psychedelic trip um, and added to their stories that you found in the Invisibles. But here we have the Six Voyages of Lone Sloan, which kicks off the first story. The other thing to keep in mind is that these stories were originally published in the early 70s. I think the story of Lone Sloan actually started in 1966. Uh, it was coming out in an anthology series, but... I think the stuff that is collected through here from the early 70s. You have a forward here by Rene Goscinny, and then it begins this crazy journey. I'm not going to go flip through each page, but I'm going to give you an idea of what to expect. So you have the character of Lone Sloan, who is sitting on a spaceship, and then all of a sudden, an explosion happens, and then this black throne appears, and Lone Sloan and the Black Throne become one. And they go on this crazy journey through time and space. You don't know how long they're going to be together. You don't know how many years, millennium, this is going to take. But that's not the point of this. And that's how... <laughs> I don't know where else I can go from here. And give you a prime example. Like This is a god here that is telling Lone Sloan uh, that now has like I said, merge with this black throne about a black god that they must be destroyed and he's given, or she has, or they have given Lone Sloan the words to use to destroy him. So what Lone Sloan does is multiply himself to go through different multi-dimensional portals, if you will. Sometimes he can split himself. Uh, I'll talk about one more story in here, but just look at the artwork. You can even put me on mute. Listen to some pretty music if you want to in the background. Maybe that's how I will sell you on this. Now, don't get used to these traditional or what I think are traditional panels that you're used to in comics. Because the further we go through this journey of him just going through different dimensions, different galaxies, different worlds, we start seeing more and more of this type of artwork. Uh, it's almost like it's an, it's like you're part of this environment and it just absorbs you. And he has such a talent for that that you feel like you are really standing on the precipice here looking into this galaxy or these worlds and it's just so mind-boggling crazy. Um, if you love the things that Jack Kirby did in The Fourth World or Steve Ditko did, and Doctor Strange. It's got artwork like that, and words just don't do it justice. Like, to sit here and hold it, and look at this spread right here, you feel like you are in this environment. You feel like you are part of all of this story, and what is happening. And then this is about a god that's eating the souls of warriors, and Lone Sloan decides to make a duplicate of himself that is evil to go and kill this god. Anyway, it gets crazy stories like that is what you get out of each and every single one of these books. Uh, this one is 72 pages. Let me see. I so these are the extras that they're including 
like the previous covers for these collections, the music, because he's also a huge fan of music, a letter uh, from Hergy, I think that's how you pronounce his name, the gentleman that created and did Tintin, to Philippe Durelet, and then the statues right here, and then other collected editions from Titan Press, or T Titan Comics and Static Press. This one has 72 pages. Let's look at the next book. So this is Delirious, and that's what the name of the planet is called that Lone Sloan is stuck in. So you don't really get a sense of time when you're reading these stories. You don't know when this took place. Look at this. This I get so much of Jack Kirby's fourth world when looking at that image. Uh, there is a forward here by Jacques uh, Bergier from 1973. And we jump right into the stories. Now, this one I remember... What stood out to me were the colors. They're a lot richer and a lot more varied than what you found in the uh, original book, The Six Voyages of Lone Sloan. And the massive landscapes and settings and even the details to the characters, you know, he just keeps getting better and better. And like I said, now are gone the traditional uh, panel layouts and he just kind of does his own thing and you just have to follow along and keep up if you can. And, yeah, this, like, again, he's stuck on this planet that's just a big war planet, and he's just trying to escape this planet, and that's really all I can say about that. And this is the type of artwork. Sometimes you'll find his signature on pages, which I think every artist does, right, when they're really proud of something. Because, uh, oh my gosh, just look at that. The colors, the details, the angles, the composition of the characters, it's just the, the panel layouts. This is a damn journey. It's an experience, like I said. Um, this one here has 80 pages. The paper stock is this glossy paper that they're using. It's not as thick as what they used in Michael Moorcock's Elric. Um, it's a little thinner than that, but it does have a glossy finish, making the colors really pop out. And as far as the binding, it is sewn binding. Granted, this is only 80 pages, but it makes those spread pages, which there are a ton, especially the later you go on through these books. Just look amazing. You're not really missing any of the artwork, especially when looking at insane pages like that. This one also has, I believe, the covers to the previous collections. Let's see, Delirious, and there we go. These were the previous covers, and then the library collection. And I believe this is the order. Yes, yeah, Salambo goes next, and Arm the Mad, the Night, and Chaos, which I showed earlier. Now I have to put another sticker down there covering that girl's booty. The Chronicles of Legion, that's a book series I've not read, so let me know if you've read that. So this is Gale right here, and of course this is after the Delirious Escape. Maybe years after, maybe a day after, who knows at this point. Maybe before, no, no, this is after, because he does mention uh, the actual events that happened there. Uh, this is the preface right here. Talking a little bit about behind the scenes here. So... This one here only has 64 pages. I think this is the smallest page count as far as the Lone Sloan books are concerned. Uh, this one, I think now we're going into the mid-70s is when this originally came out. And I believe it was an anthology series. Was it the Metal Metal Turlent? What? It, I think that's what it was uh, that later on got translated here in America to some stories like uh, from Heavy Metal Magazine. But this is the type of artwork in this one. Uh, this is one of my favorite stories, and the least I say about it, the better, just because it's such a freaking crazy experience. Because he gets kidnapped by this dark entity, and he has no idea how he even got there, or how he's going to get out. But... <laughs> what? What? How unfair is it that somebody is that talented? Man. Man. Now, he's still with us. Um, I know that he was born the same year my dad was born, like 1944. And he's still, I don't think he's still as active as he was a few years ago when I did research on him. Uh, but he is still alive. And my gosh, it's just the amount of details that are happening on those pages. And there are a lot of pages like that that you have to turn it around. And it's almost like part of the experience, part of the the journey is actually like going through tunnels. And that's what it feels like. It almost has a claustrophobic feel at times. And he was also doing experimental things, a la Jack Kirby right here, where he's using photos and things like that, good stock footage 
or stock photos rather, and then putting art on top of it. Again, just crazy designs like this and page layouts is what you come to expect from this particular story. Uh, now, let's look at the extras here. So you have the original covers there. Metal Hurlant, that's what the magazine was called. So it originally was published there. And then the collections. I think this is the second time I want to say that this was published. I remember a darker cover. Um, like it was kind of like this color, this dark gray, or like this. It's Delirious too. I haven't picked that one up yet. And then another image, and then your end paper there. Uh, the books themselves don't have any dust jackets, and they all have a flat spine. You saw how big they were. But that's it. That is all I have to say about Drulé's masterpiece, Lone Sloan. That, as they say, is that. If you are interested in purchasing this box set, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and the build of this box set. Let me know in the comments down below if you've never read it, if you've never picked up any Droulé art. Boy, you are in for a psychedelic treat. I can assure you that if you haven't. Uh, but if you read the stuff, what you think about it, what your favorite Lone Sloan book is, and what you think of the art. Uh, leave those comments down below. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Hopefully we will see more box sets. If this one sells well enough. We'll see a lot more from Titan Comics. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.